On September 19, 2014, the group NVIDIA released a video in which they claimed to have recreated the famous photo of Buzz Aldrin descending the ladder and found the cause of him being illuminated on the shaded side. I posted a message in the comments proving that NVIDIA was wrong, but it seems that some have asked me to do the public service of producing a response video. Here goes. So with our new technology in Maxwell, we have the ability to do something that's never been done before, which is global illumination re in real time. What that means is I can actually simulate the bouncing of light off of multiple surfaces and lighting other objects. With that technology, we look for what's the opportunity to show this off. And there's this very famous photograph of Buzz Aldrin as he was descending the ladder of the lunar module when they landed on the moon. We're modeling basically a real-time version of the Apollo 11 landing site in Unreal Engine 4. And there's been a lot of speculation over the years about the lighting of that and whether, you know, that the conspiracy theory is whether it was real. And so we thought it'd be cool to try to simulate the lighting of the, of the landing site from an accurate point of view. We wanted to take on the challenge of showing, no, the single light source of the sun was actually able to light Buzz Aldrin even though he's in the shadows. Normally see. To make sure that this is actually accurate, we did a lot of research on the different properties of the lunar soil, the spacesuit material, the material on the lander. We looked at a lot of photos, the lunar landing area, satellite imagery of that. We actually had to model the landing site, an astronaut that was realistic to the Apollo 11 spacesuits, model a land that matched the materials and the different colored regions on it and the shape of the lander legs and ladder and all that kind of thing. This all plays into how the image is created. After the painstaking process of getting every detail modeled in 3D, the team then had to create a physically accurate lunar lighting model. Well, we have a bunch of different modes that you can adjust in the demo, sort of as a progression through the technology. And the first mode is basically showing it how it would be if there was no indirect light or no bounce light at all. So basically no global illumination. And that mode kind of simulates what it would look like just by default in most game engines. And that's the source of where a lot of the conspiracy theories come from. Because when you look at that scene, Buzz Aldrin is completely in shadow because he's on the shadowed side of the lamp. At this point, one could argue that Lucas Madger is poisoning the well. The logical fallacy in which adverse or even false information about an opponent is preemptively presented to an audience with the intention of discrediting or ridiculing everything the opponent is about to say. In this case, by claiming that a scene with no direct reflected light is where the conspiracy theory has stemmed from. Actually, this theory has stemmed from physical observations when testing material with the exact same reflective properties as the lunar surface. More on that in just a moment. The next step is basically adding additional point lights to simulate light bounced off of surfaces, and that just has to be placed by a human. And so if we enable that mode, you can see that it doesn't look very realistic at all. The next mode uses Maxwell's new rendering operations to render a more accurate view that actually does take into account spectral reflections, um, bounce light off the ground. But even after the light was modeled using NVIDIA's voxel-based global illumination, the image still did not look right. Part of the challenge was we've got to get the surface reflection of the moon dust, we've got to get the reflection off of the lunar module. We got all of that in place and properly modeled, we thought, but the image still didn't look quite right. There was some additional light source that was just missing. Turns out we found a clip of videotape that was shot from the other side of the ladder, and as he's coming down the ladder from the opposite side, there is a huge glowing bright white light. And as we analyzed that video a little more, we realized it's Neil Armstrong himself. The bright white space suit that he was wearing reflected all that sunlight off of him and back onto Buzz Aldrin. So essentially, Neil Armstrong himself was a light source in that scene. It makes sense when you look at you know, the albedo value, which is the amount of light that's reflected into your eye, basically, from a surface. For the lunar soil, is around like 12%. But the, the suits, because they're like a, a Teflon-coated material, they're around 80 to 90%. And so they're very reflective. It's almost like a mirror, except you can't see something in the reflection. It just reflects the light. Once we pulled that information in and actually modeled an, a second astronaut and the light coming off of him, the bounced light was correct. And Buzz Aldrin looked lit properly, as it did in that very famous photo taken in 1969. I'm crying foul on this one, and here's why. We will deal with the claim that Armstrong was the light source later, but for now, let's examine their claim that they got the albedo of their CGI lunar surface right. Here is the image that they claim is illuminated solely by the sunlight reflecting off the lunar surface. And here is the image with Armstrong's reflection. 
Firstly, there is not much difference between the two. Aldrin is only marginally brighter than he was without Armstrong's reflection. And look how bright he is, far greater than it would have been on a surface with an albedo between 7 and 12%. Here are five examples of what it would actually look like. In 2009, I conducted my experiment on an asphalt road using the sun as my light source. The albedo of asphalt falls within the same albedo as the moon, making this surface material perfect for mimicking the reflective properties of the moon. To shield the subject from the natural fill light provided by our blue sky, I put a black box over the subject so the only fill light would be from the sunlit road. With the sunlit asphalt correctly exposed, the shadowed side of the limb and the astronaut standing in the shadow were both in darkness. Correctly exposing the shaded side requires opening the aperture up to the point that the sunlit asphalt is just a wash of bright light. The Apollo 11 photograph shows both the sunlit terrain and the shaded sides correctly exposed simultaneously. Some have argued that the reflected light was blocked by my box. I beg to differ, but before I had the opportunity to redo the experiment with a larger box, a couple of Russian cinematographers redid the Mythbusters experiment and arrived at the same results as I. Unlike Mythbusters, Yuri Elkov and Leonid Konovalov actually used material with an albedo of 7%, which is within the same range as the moon's reflectivity. The resulting image shows a much darker astronaut. Additionally, in 2001, Eon Goddard published a website in which he attempted to prove that Apollo was real by recreating certain photographs using paper, a lamp, and models. But in actuality, his photos prove the exact opposite. In this photo, Goddard attempts to recreate the Charlie Duke photo on the left, first using white paper as his surface, and then using black paper. The former reveals the shaded area of the astronaut illuminated by the reflected light. The latter does not. Goddard attempted to cite this as evidence for Apollo. He was apparently not aware that the image on the right is a more accurate demonstration. Black paper has an albedo between 4 and 7% while white paper has an albedo between 40 and 87 percent. So the paper in the center image is obviously reflecting about 10 times more light than the moon could possibly reflect. More recently, the Chinese have released photos from their own U-2 rover. Some members of the pro-NASA side have been citing these photos as evidence for Apollo. I can't imagine why, because they prove just the opposite. In this photo taken by U2, the sunlit portion of the lunar surface is correctly exposed, while the shaded side of the Chang'e 3 spacecraft is in darkness. In order to reveal the detail on the shaded side of the Chang'e 3 lander, U2 had to overexpose the lunar surface to the point that the detail was completely or mostly erased. That looks nothing like the Apollo 11 image, which clearly shows sunlit terrain and the illuminated shaded objects correctly exposed simultaneously. It could also be pointed out that this image has undergone changes to the brightness settings in an attempt to bring up the detail. Look how the sky appears as a pale reddish black instead of pitch black. This indicates that in the raw image, the shaded side of Chang'e 3 was even darker and we can prove that the Chinese have been adjusting their photos. In later releases of other photos from Chang'e 3, the contrast and brightness settings were altered to reveal what was previously obscured by shadow. In this example, the effect didn't come out so good. You can tell from the pale lunar sky and pale shadows that the contrast and brightness of the image has been doctored. Photos taken by the Russian Lunokhod rovers also reveal the shaded side of their landing spacecraft to be in darkness. Hi. Hey, do you want to play a game now? Okay, here, I help. One of these things is not like the other things. One of these things just doesn't belong. Can you guess which thing is not like the other thing before I finish my song? Now look closely. Look. Now something here. One of these things does not belong. In summary, we have five different photographs taken on a terrain with the same albedo as the moon, 
or in two cases, with the actual lunar surface. And they all demonstrate that the moon's albedo was too low to offer sufficient fill light, and thus the shaded side is black. Yet the NVIDIA image shows a much brighter figure. What happened? Why did they not get the same effect? Especially considering that the shaded sides of the Chang'e 3 and Luna 17 spacecrafts were in darkness. It would appear that NVIDIA have either carelessly or deceptively set the albedo of their CGI lunar surface to be much higher than 12%. In fact, judging by how illuminated their astronaut seems relative to the five images taken on actual material with the same albedo as the moon, or in two cases taken on the actual moon, I'd say NVIDIA probably used an albedo of around 40%. As for Neil Armstrong's spacesuit providing most of the fill light, afraid not. As I said before, in NVIDIA's image taken with Armstrong, the shaded areas are only marginally brighter than without him. The only real change is a faint partial illumination on the lower panels of the descent stage. This indicates that the reflection caused by a second astronaut standing away from the LEM would offer minimal reflected light at best. And if you don't believe me, all you need to prove that to yourself is the Apollo 12 EVA footage, which, for the record, was also fake. In this telecast, we can see astronaut Pete Conrad at the base of the lunar module. The image in the top right corner of the screen is the corresponding 16mm film. The best examples I've seen of Conrad's spacesuit offering fill light seem to be when he's standing in sunlight at the bottom of the ladder or when he's standing close to the Mesa. I don't think in too far. I try a little. When that sun's bright, that's just like somebody. But when he steps further away from the LEM, the reflection on the ladder becomes noticeably dimmer and doesn't even cover the full length. Unfortunately, we don't have corresponding 16mm reels for the entirety of the telecast, but in most cases, you can see the ladder is in pitch darkness, occasionally with some even fainter reflections lighting across the metal, presumably caused by light reflecting off Conrad's spacesuit as he wanders around in sunlight. Or rather, what we are supposed to believe is sunlight. It's difficult to imagine his or Armstrong's spacesuit acting as a fill light when all Conrad's can do is throw some partial and dim reflections onto the ladder. Also note how the landscape in the background is just an overexposed wash of light. If the landscape was correctly exposed, then the reflections on the ladder would be even dimmer. Some opponents have claimed that this Apollo 12 footage is a bad example, because I am comparing TV with film. Hmm. Strange that they did not make that ad hoc objection when Jay Windley and Zigzag Productions did the exact same thing in their experiment. As you can see, there is only one light source in this entire picture, and it's behind us. According to the conspiracy theorists, this side of the astronaut should be in total shadow. But it isn't. What's happening? The light from the ground around us is being reflected back up toward the astronaut, and it's illuminating this portion of him. Other opponents have claimed that my experiment was invalid, because I did not use a second astronaut to act as Armstrong. Funny that I didn't hear them make this objection when Mythbusters did their deceptive experiment. But as shown by the Apollo 12 footage, there was no need to include a second astronaut because it would have offered minimal effect at best. Now I can't speak for Elkov and Konovalov because I was not involved in their experiment. But while they did not include a second astronaut in their experiment, what they did do, however, was put on a white jacket, like the one Jamie Hyman was wearing, and stand behind the LEM. Only then did their figure resemble the Aldrin photo. А теперь, как Адам в разрушителях мифов, я надену белые одежды и подойду, встану рядом с лунным моделем. Ну, конечно, изменилось. Посмотрите, какое отражение мощное со стороны камеры. Отойду Видно? теперь. Вот сейчас исчезло. 
Вот сейчас опять появилась. If NVIDIA or anyone else is going to claim that it was Neil Armstrong's spacesuit accounting for the fill lighting, keeping in mind that Conrad's suit could only partially and faintly illuminate the LEM ladder, then I suppose they must think that Neil Armstrong was as big as Godzilla to account for that much fill light. Another problem with NVIDIA's theory, as pointed out by Percy and Bennett, is that Armstrong was not always standing in sunlight when he allegedly took these photos of Aldrin's descent. Here is the first photo allegedly taken by Armstrong, and here is the corresponding video feed. You can see how Armstrong is almost completely shrouded in the LEM shadow, yet his photo still shows Aldrin brightly illuminated. Aldrin looks exactly the same as he did descending the ladder. So much for Armstrong being the light source. I'll try to watch your place uh, from underneath here. But the bottom line is, in NVIDIA's CGI recreation, the shadowed side of Aldrin is only partially brighter with Armstrong than it was without. This, coupled with the Apollo 12 footage, indicates that the fill lighting effect of a second astronaut would have been minuscule at best. And when pitched against actual photographs taken on a terrain with 7-12% to albedo, it becomes clear that the albedo settings in NVIDIA's program are not what they claim they are. Hell, the marginal difference in brightness between the two photos should be more than enough to indicate that their albedo settings are off. If they are going to insist that a second astronaut accounted for most of the fill light, then surely you must expect something much, much brighter than this, considering the vastly different albedos of the spacesuit and lunar regolith. 80 to 90% for the former, versus 7 to 12% for the latter. I challenge NVIDIA to show their 130,000 plus subscribers just what settings were used. I also challenge them to recreate this exact experiment in real life, using asphalt so no one can cry foul on their albedo, put up or shut up.